Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In this one, I'm gonna be going over a new sort of targeting technique that I've found that I've been testing for a number of weeks now. Um, and I've finally got some results that I wanna show you guys and I wanna talk you through how I managed to basically turn a carousel ad into a $4,000 a day campaign. So yeah, I mean, let's just, let's just jump straight into my computer and I can show you exactly what happened and how I did this. Okay, so we're just in my ads manager right now. Um, and as you can see here, this is yesterday. So if I just move over to the left here, you can see that I spent £1,256 yesterday and that brought in uh, just short of £3,000 in the ads manager. That was a little bit higher than that because um, I'm obviously capturing uh, sales in the back end with my SMS remarketing, my recart, email and messenger marketing. Um, so that was actually more around £3,300 it was by the end of the day. Uh, so, I mean, most of that came from the SMS remarketing. If you want to see the app that I use, then there's a link in the description so you can check that out. But as you can see here, it gave me a 2.35 ROAS just yesterday. My break even on this is 1.45. So this was a, a really nice day, a really nice profitable day. I think it worked out at around 27, 28% profit margin on this day. So all this was done. Uh, with a carousel ad and the, the way that I went out with this was literally just as a conversion campaign There was no PPE targeting none of that no custom audiences no 95% video viewers um, Because I was trying to test a new targeting method and I was trying to test a, an ad type that isn't really used that much so Carousel ads, I use them a lot of my retargeting when I'm doing retargeting but I don't really tend to use them as part of my conversion campaign because as, as some of you probably already know, I focus a lot on the 95% custom audiences uh, to do with video viewers. So to try a different method was was interesting for me. It was part of my testing strategy, but it, it seems to be working. And if I just switch these dates over to the uh, last few weeks, as you can see here, um, it brought in just over 20,000. Again, this is gonna be higher because of all the backend remarketing uh, with a 2.56 ROAS because I spent uh, seven thousand nine hundred and forty-one pounds on it. So just shot of eight eight thousand pounds, and that brought in um uh, twenty thousand, just over twenty thousand, probably more towards the twenty-five thousand with all the back end re remarketing as well. So overall, as a carousel campaign, there's, there's something where it's just straight in conversion with no interest, nothing like that. It it works really well, and I'm still running this now. I'm still testing it. I'm going to start testing it with different products. And I will be putting this inside the Advanced Dropshipping Academy, this technique, and I'll be reviewing this exact product to my students within the academy so you can see exactly what I did with this. And I'll be going straight into all the ad sets and showing you the exact methods I used to make this work. So if you want to know more about this, if you want to see exactly how I did it, make sure you enroll in the academy because this is going to reveal a lot and it's going to be revealing a different type of campaign, a different type of targeting technique that not a lot of people are talking about. But what I can tell you, I'll tell you the type of product this is. So it gives you an idea on what types of products actually work. So this product was a pair of sunglasses. Now, I'm not going to tell you which sunglasses they were, but I'll tell you there are a pair of sunglasses that are on AliExpress. If you just search sunglasses on AliExpress, you'll find a ton of different ones. You could try this yourself. But the reason it's been working so well over the last week or so is because Europe, as you might even already know, Europe's having a heat wave at the moment. So there is a huge, huge demand for products like sunglasses and coolers and anything that keeps people protected from the sun. And it's a high demand. So when I knew this was going to be happening, when I knew this heat wave was going to be coming, I found these sunglasses, I got them ready and I sent out this ad to everyone I thought was going to be affected by that heat wave. That was the original test. Once those sales started coming, once I started getting the view contents, I started going down the funnel. So I started doing the the, the visitors, custom audiences, and then building lookalikes off, off the back of that. Then I was doing my add to carts. Then I was doing my purchases. And what you can see here, by the end of this at the end of this week, I was running multiple different ad sets for different parts of the funnel, and they were all bringing in really good ROASs. So as you can see, we've got twos, we've got threes. Um, remember, bear in mind that my break even on this is. Um, 1.45, so we've got some some really good row assets then. If I just started by purchase conversion, you can see here, brought in three grand with a 2.4 row ass, two and a half grand with a three row ass. Um, it works really well. It works really well. And we've even got some here, the smaller conversions, but with really good row assets on them. So the ad for this, I'm gonna talk about the creative, what I used for this. Um, 
it was just the product photos of the sunglasses. They were just each of the different variants because they had different colors, they had different sort of styles on them. So I put each of the product photos in the slots of the carousel and I just let people then swipe between them and each one of them took them to that particular variant on the product page. So if they picked the blue style, for example, they would land on the product page and the blue style would already be selected. So I did that and then in the ad copy, it just literally said, um, do you, you know, are you looking to upgrade your sunglasses? We just found an amazing deal on, on these, these sunglasses here and you know, get yours here or something like that, he said at the bottom. And then people were clicking that ad and coming straight through to the product page and, and buying it. And I just end, ended up scaling and scaling and scaling. So if I just go back um, to my campaigns, so as you can see here, I had thousand pound a day campaigns going. I had 30 pound a day, I had five pound a day, I had 200 pound a day, I had different sort of budget levels going on this on this campaign for all these different ones. Now, they were all working. If I just go over here, as you can see here, I remember 1.45 was my break even. So this one was a little bit close but it's still profitable and it's always going to be five or 10% higher anyway, because Facebook doesn't always capture the purchases for a start. And then you've got all your back end remarketing in there as well. So all these numbers are going to be higher than what you can see on here. But yeah, that was kind of my campaigns. I had different ones going and what I did for the, the 1000 pound a day campaign, I actually set it as a cost cap. So what the cost cap does is it allows Facebook to try and capture a purchase within sort of a limit. So you're not paying too much to get those purchases. It tries and gets your cost per purchase at the same level. And I've only recently started using cost cap because it's quite new. It's more of an advanced bidding strategy within Facebook, but I've been, I've been trying to use that and you can set that up within your, uh, with your campaign level. You just choose cost cap, which I'll just show you here. So when you're in your campaign, just choose your daily budget, set it as cost cap. And then within the actual ad set itself, you want to set uh, your cost per purchase down here. So this is the average cost per purchase Facebook is gonna pay for. So what this does is if you're not getting a purchase within that cost that you've set, Facebook will slow down the spending until it can keep it under that. So it's controlling your cost. So even on a 1,000 pound a day campaign budget, it's still slowing it down. It'll slow it down, it won't spend it all. And that's how you can control your costs. So the reason I picked 1545 here was because my break even on this product was 20 pounds. And I always start at 75% of my break even point. So I started around that. So as you can see here, 1545, this is gonna give me about a 75% of my break even point. And if I find that I'm not really spending, the budget isn't being spent, I will increase this by two pounds until it starts spending. So 15.45 to me, for me, worked really, really well. As you can see here, it spent 969 pounds out of a thousand, but the day before, it only spent 567 because it wasn't reaching the, uh, the right cost. And you can see over here, the cost per result was 15 pounds 34. So it was keeping my cost per purchase well within my break even point. And that allowed me to keep that profitable as I was going and as I was scaling. And it's, uh, it's a really useful technique. I'm still testing it, but it seems to be working. And you can see from the numbers here that it, it's, it works really well. Um, but yeah, that was kind of how I managed to do it. You know, carousels, you don't always have to do, I think, I think the point of this video is to tell you that you don't always have to spend time creating a video to make money drop shipping. If you can put the right product in front of the right audience when there's the right demand there for it, people will buy it no matter what. So using a simple carousel ad, you could throw up a carousel ad right now, use product photos from AliExpress and just send your products out there. And as you can see, and my click-through rates were pretty decent. I was getting 1.4, 1.7, 1.2, 1.2 .2 again, sort of thing. So these, Click through rates and these are link click through rates these just aren't clicks on the ad these are the actual link click through rates so you know anything over one percent on a click through rate is, is is good the higher you can get it the better um if you look at my cpms they're only seven eight pounds five pounds on some of them it's quite cheap i'm getting a good click through rate my cost per click is well below uh one pound which is kind of when you want to keep it you want to keep your cost below a pound um and yeah, I mean, the metrics on it were really, really good. It was spending money, it was hitting my budgets, but it was also being profitable. And that was, that's the key behind it. So I hope you found this insightful. It's a little bit different. Um, we, you know, don't always think about video ads. Video ads can be time consuming. You can put a lot of effort into trying, chopping and changing and matching everything up and it might not work. Whereas with the carousel ad, you can literally have a carousel ad running within about 10 minutes. So 
It's really good to jump on something as quickly as you see it, get product photos out there, and just go off your click-through rate. If people are clicking on the ad and your click-through rate is high, you know it's working. If your click-through rate is really low, it's less than like 1%, um, you know it's not really working for that product, so uh, try something else. But yeah, there's no harm in trying it. It can take like 10 minutes to get a carousel ad set up. It's really easy, and it's gonna save you a ton of time trying to edit footage from wherever you can get it from to create a unique video ad. At least this way you can get an ad out there and just test the waters. And on the plus side, you don't have to do PPE. So you're saving a little bit of money at the front end as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it works. You can see it works. So give it a go on yours, try some products out. It works really, really well for products that everybody kind of wants and everyone can use and everyone kind of knows what it is. So think about those kind of products that also fit the winning product criteria that I've gone through in previous videos. So yeah, hopefully you found it useful. If you have any questions about this, drop drop me a message in the in the comments box below. Um, if you want to learn more about how to drop ship, make sure you join the Advanced Dropshipping Academy because this, this technique is gonna be put in there over the next week or so. And I'll be reviewing the exact product that I use to do this. So you can get a perfect idea and a perfect understanding about how this works. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I hope you found this useful. Again, if you have any, any video recommendations you want me to do, drop them in the comments as well. Uh, I am answering everything still. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Hey.